Today in this 2009 Dodge Ram pickup, we're going to show you the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57365. We'll also get a measurement of our original ride height, which is about just under 38 inches. Let's go ahead and put our weight in. We're actually at 34 and a half inches. All right, let's go ahead and take our test drive and watch the suspension in action. All right, we got our load back in our truck. Let's go ahead and air it up and bring it back uh, as close as we can to its original ride height. We got it aired up. We'll go back to original ride height, which was around 38 inches. And you can see the same load we put in there before, pushed the truck down at least a few inches. And then with only 40 PSI in the airbags, brought it back up to original ride height. And it actually rides and drives a lot better now. All right, this is what the airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helpless Springs will look like when it's installed in our truck. And you can see all our components. We have a bracket that gets installed to the top of the frame right here. A little bracket that gets installed on top of the axle. And our air spring, of course, that goes in between. Okay. We also have our airline fitting, which is actually inside of here. You can see it comes with a supplied airline that goes all the way out back to your bumper or wherever you want to add your airlines on the truck. Now this airbag is designed for a PSI rating from 5 to 100 PSI. It's always a good idea to run about 5 or 10 PSI in the bags at all times to help keep it shaped and reduce wear and tear on it. Everything you see here on our driver's side is duplicated over on the passenger side as well. Now these air springs do have a load capacity of 5,000 pounds or whatever your truck is rated for as well. If you take a closer look at the top and the bottom of the air spring, you'll see some metal plates on the bottom. That's the roll plates. What this does is it helps increase the load capacity of the air springs and also protects the springs from damage extending the life of the air springs. And of course, this will take a lot of the strain off your OEM suspension when you put a heavy load in the back of your truck or haul a heavy trailer. Typical installation has two air valves, so you can inflate each spring independently for a side-to-side -side leveling of all center loads. All right, next we'll go ahead and show you how we install the air springs. So we have our truck already lifted up. We'll go ahead and put a support underneath the axle. We'll undo the shocks, and then slowly lower the axle down and remove the springs. Now we need to do this on both sides of the truck. All right, we got our support under our axle. We'll go ahead and raise it up just a little bit and we'll remove the bolts from the shocks at the bottom by the axle. All right, we're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket and wrench. We have these broke loose already, but these are really stiff to take apart. Okay, that was our passenger side. One more time on driver's side. Before we remove our springs, we'll go ahead and make a mark. When we put them, so when we put them back together, we know exactly how they sit originally. Okay. We'll go ahead and slowly lower the axle, just so we have enough room to remove the spring. Next, we need, we need to remove the jount stop. So we just we'll work it back and forth. You may have to pry it out, but a lot of times it comes out pretty easy. Okay, next up, this entire cup right here has to be removed. So we're gonna have to take a cutting wheel and break these welds to pop it loose. Certain angles of saws all work too. Okay, now I have the, the cup removed. We'll go ahead and grind this down flat so it's nice and smooth for a bracket to fit up against. Now it'd be a good idea to go ahead and use something to protect the surface after we're done. Now we can start working with our bracket, this Allen head bolt. We'll go through the slot. We'll flip it over. Put the matching lock nut in place. And we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Now we're just going to snug this down so it holds its shape but it still moves back and forth. Okay, now we're going to place this up against the frame. There's a pre-existing hole that this bolt will go into. We'll push up against it and then make sure that this bracket fits against the side of the frame. Okay, this bolt, this is our pre-existing hole right here. So we'll put our bolt into place. That'll help guide it initially. Then we'll push this bracket with this flange against the body of the frame. I'm just gonna just tap it back. So we'll put it back into place. Then we'll use a paint marker to find a center. 
make a mark. Take the bracket back down. We're going to drill out a quarter inch hole. Okay. Next, we're going to install this uh, thread forming bolt. It's going to use a half inch diameter socket. We're going to just run it until it makes threads. Let's put our bracket back into place and install the bolt for good. Then we'll torque the bolt down as described in the instructions. Okay. Now on our bracket here and here, we'll drill two more quarter inch holes and install the same thread forming bolts. Now we have our upper bracket assembly fully installed on our frame. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process over on driver's side. Now next we'll go ahead and put our springs back in place. Make sure we line up our yellow marks as well. We'll raise the axle back up and reconnect our shocks. Okay, now we'll move on to some pre-assembly onto our air springs. This is one of our air springs right here. We'll be doing this for the passenger side. Take a roll pan, put it into place. We'll line up the three holes and we'll loosely install the airline fitting. That plate goes on next. And also, we'll install four 3 8 carriage bolts in the corners. The roll pan kind of helps hold it in place. Here and here, we'll add two 3 8 bolts that are fine thread with a lock washer and a flat washer as well. All right, now we'll tighten our airline fitting about one and a half turns, and that'll seal it up. These two bolts will tighten down for 916 socket. Now we'll torque these bolts down as specified in the instructions. All right, let's go ahead and flip this over. Now with this going on the passenger side, we'll make sure this is the uh, air fitting is fitting in that direction towards the tire. Put another roll pan on top. For this side, we'll go ahead and put a bracket into place. We're looking at these two hooks. The airline fitting will be on the right-hand side. These two flathead screws will go into place. We'll loosely install these, temporarily put into place to double check ourselves. Now, eventually we'll use a 732nd Allen head bit to tighten these guys down. Let's do a quick test fit. These little hooks will fit underneath this edge right here and make sure airline fitting is going towards the tire. All right, at this point, we'll go ahead and tighten down our hardware for good. Okay, next up, two 3 8 uh, carriage bolts. We'll run them to the inside here and run them through these slots. All right, let's go ahead and set this back into place. These two bolts will line up with two existing holes on the bracket on top of the axle. All right, here's the existing holes right here. And this, mo and this mount for linkage right here, there's a hole right here that it mounts up to. Let's go ahead and put it into place. Two locking flange nuts, we'll go ahead and spin on. One here. This one, of course, is hidden, so I'm gonna use a small socket and an extension to help get it in place. I'm gonna use a 9 16th short socket, put the flange nut in there, and kind of steer the bolt. And then we'll go ahead and thread on the nut. Now this isn't exactly a straight on shot, so we'll need some patience. Okay, now we'll switch over to a deep well socket and tighten it down for good. And then we'll tighten down the other bolt as well. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process over for a driver's side. However, the bracket goes on top of the axle, does have an offset to it, you can see how this one goes on to the left-hand side because the carriage bolts we installed, this one's clearly visible and it's kind of offset from the, from the air spring on the driver's side. Look at the passenger side, this bolt's tucked in more along underneath the spring. You can see our carriage bolt here is a lot farther underneath the spring on the passenger side. Okay, now at this point, we can go ahead and raise the axle up and put everything together. We'll slowly, I'm using a a jack to slowly lift the axle back up or you could put the truck with the tires back on on the ground and accomplish the same thing 
but you want to make sure you guide these bolts in first. Once we have our bolts ran through, we'll go ahead and install four more of the flange nuts. We have the hardware loosely installed on the passenger side. We'll do it one more time over on the driver's side. Okay, once we have all our hardware started, we'll go ahead and use a 916 ratchet wrench and one that flexes works out really great in this application here. Now on this side, we'll just have to use a regular wrench on it. All right, passenger side done. One more time on driver's side. Okay. Next up, we need to install a heat shield. This will go over on the passenger side. We need to bend these tabs up where this will get clamped onto the exhaust tube and the rest of this will protect the airbag from the exhaust. So let's take a tab and just bend it up just like that. Just one quick turn. Make an angle like that. Clamps will go around the exhaust just like that and hold it in place. Now we'll loosen our and tighten our clamps using a 916 nut driver. Okay. Okay. We'll draw them up most of the way, but still leave us room to work with it. Alright, we'll go ahead and hold them in place, maybe make a few adjustments. We'll go ahead and clamp it down. Just make sure nothing's touching. Now we go ahead and work for our airline. We'll go ahead and unbundle it, find a halfway mark, and using a tubing cutter, we'll cut it in half. Now we'll take our cut halves, and we'll install these ends into our airline fittings on top of the air springs. Now to install it, we'll put it into our fitting, We'll push it until it stops, and then one more time again. And then we'll go ahead and route this towards our bumper. I'm going to use some openings and suspension hangers and route it out towards the back. From here on out, I'm going to run it inside the frame towards the bumper. Okay. We're going to use the pre-existing holes in the hitch to mount our airlines. So what I'm going to do first is take the supplied nut, thread it on, probably just right to the end of the threads, and then a star washer will go on next. We'll run it through the hole. This side will get a rubber washer, flat washer, and a nut. Now to tighten down the hardware, we'll use a half inch deep well socket. Go ahead and roll up our ex excess and we'll zip tie it in place. Cut off our excess. All right, one more time over on driver's side. All right, at this point we have everything installed on our truck. Now a couple things to know. When you pick up the vehicle by the frame, you wanna make sure you have all the air out of the airbags. Okay, when you, as you lift it up and down, it's okay for the axle to hang from the airbags. But when you work on it for a long period of time, you definitely wanna support the axle like we have here. Just take the pressure off the airbags so we're not doing all the work holding up the axle. So let's go ahead and put our tires and wheels back on and air it up and see how it works. After everything's installed, it's also a good idea to go ahead and go underneath, spray all the connection points with some soapy water, and look for bubbles. If you've got any bubbles, you may have to take apart the fitting and redo it, which is very simple. And with that, that'll finish it for our install of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57365 on this 2009 Dodge Ram.